Hey what's up guys, Gave Productions here. Today I'll be doing a relatively different video. I will not be reviewing a product, but rather I'm going to be talking about a piece of tech which I find particularly interesting. Um, I'm hoping that this could be a new series called Underrated Tech where I do talk about all sorts of tech that I find either really cool or underrated. Anyways, let's dive into the first piece of tech that I'll be talking about, which is the Trace Together token. Now this may be unfamiliar to all of my viewers outside of Singapore, but I'll explain roughly what the Trace Together token does and what I think is so cool about it. So what is the Trace Together token? Well essentially, it's a small Bluetooth proximity device that you carry around with you to help aid the government in contact tracing efforts against COVID-19. How it functions is similar to the Trace Together app which you can get for iPhone and Android. Uh, it uses Bluetooth proximity to determine if you've been potentially close to or have come into contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Basically, it uses Bluetooth signals to record other nearby Trace Together tokens and phones with the Trace Together app. Uh, no, it doesn't use a GPS to track your precise location in case anyone is wondering about that. This has also been proven by people who have tore down Trace Together tokens to prove the fact that they do not have GPS inside of them. The secondary function of the Trace Together token is to aid you in checking into places where normally you need to scan a QR code with your phone or have your NREC scanned in order to enter a shopping center or even some shops and restaurants. Basically, there's a small QR code on the back of your token where check-in stations with the safe entry scanners can scan the QR code on your device. There is also a function where you can actually tap your token on a little pad thing that are stationed at some shopping centers instead of needing to have the QR code of your device scanned. Now just for the fun of it, I'm going to go through some of the specs of the device. The tokens are water resistant, however the government didn't specifically say how water resistant. This does mean that if you do get caught out in the rain or if you drop your token into water, it should more or less survive. The battery life of the token supposedly lasts about 6 months. Uh, every minute the token has a light on it which flashes one of three colours, green, yellow or red. When it flashes green, it means that the battery is pretty much full and you don't have to care about it at all. When it's yellow, it means that you are starting to get low on battery so you may have to start taking note of that. Once it's red, that does mean that it is time to get your token replaced at a nearby community centre. Okay, so now let's talk about why I find this token really cool. Firstly, the Trace Together app on the phone uses Bluetooth and as we all know, Bluetooth does drain the battery on your phone. Of course, that does depend on what phone you're using, but no matter what phone you are using, Bluetooth will still eat up a bit of your battery. As I use a Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra Exynos Edition, the added battery consumption of Bluetooth on top of the already poor battery life just wasn't doing it for me and so I decided to get the Trace Together token. Another cool feature about the token is the fact that it does have a QR code on it which can be used for safe entry scanning uh, by either scanning the QR code on the token or by tapping it on a safe entry pad. This actually does help speed up safe entry for me as to me it is a whole lot more convenient than having to unlock your phone and scanning a QR code. This is especially so for people who do use iPhones as Face ID is the main way to log into your phone so you don't have to put on your mask every time you need to log into your phone and scan a QR code. Instead, you just take out the token, get it scanned and you're good to go. I really feel that the feature is pretty underrated as it does cost me a lot less inconvenience every single time. This is especially good for non-tech savvy people like some elderly who don't own smartphones and cannot download the Trace Together app. There are however certain places that still do not accept the scanning of the Trace Together token due to the lack of a scanner and so I do have to occasionally use my SingPass app to scan in but at least I do not need to use the Trace Together app and waste my phone's battery as I only need to use my phone to check in and I already have the token for contact tracing anyways. The last thing that I find really cool about the Trace Together token as a whole is how in just a few months, the token had evolved in shape and size to become so much more portable and attractive in design. When the Trace Together token was first announced, the first batch of tokens were kind of these AirPods case shaped tokens and they were even about the same size. This wasn't big by any means but it was a little bulky to carry around and it didn't fit in pockets really well due to how thick they were. A few months later and the token had a huge evolution in shape and design. Not only were they far smaller than their first batch counterparts, but they also looked drastically better. I mean, just look at the size difference between one of the first tokens distributed and the current token that you can collect. Now, do take note that there are different sizes and shapes for the token depending on where you collect them. 
There are some more rectangular shape tokens for example, but in general, all the different shape tokens being distributed now are far smaller than they were in the past. So yeah, that pretty much sums up all I wanted to say about this token. I think that the token is a really cool idea and it is a piece of underrated tech because to be fair, there wasn't really a need to make the token smaller or more portable than it already was. And the government could have just kept issuing the first generation tokens as they do more or less the same function as the new ones. But they decided to go ahead anyways and improve on the token design in terms of size and shape. I mean, we do tend to see this trend in mainstream tech where the second generation of a product usually drastically improves on the first generation. We see this with many products like the Samsung Galaxy Fold, the butterfly keyboards on the MacBooks, and even things like the Apple Pencil that went from an awkward way of plugging into your iPad to charge to a much more simpler way of magnetically wireless charging on top of your iPad Pro. So same story here for the token. The change is undoubtedly impressive and we all just love to see it. Especially so when it's done on the company or organization or even the government's own accord without anyone asking for it. And yeah, I'd like to see this trend continue in tech where companies and organizations do continue to improve on subsequent generations of tech products or the tech that they are giving out in the case of the government without anyone really giving any feedback or asking for it. Anyways, that's been it for the first episode of Underrated Tech. If you like this video and would like to see more of this series, do let me know down in the comment section and by liking this video. Do subscribe if you haven't and share this video if you found it useful or interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.